that person is 10 times more likely to actually continue to work with your dental office and transfer their insurance program to your dentist. Why? Because you have them in your chair. It's an easier sell to get them as a customer. That is called splintering. This happened to me yesterday. You just got splintered. I got splintered hard. You literally have to splinter in your skin. I got stabbed by a huge piece of wood is what happened to me. Let's see. Let's see it. I was in the dentist office getting my teeth What's up, everyone? Today, we have Eric Simon, founder and CEO of The Broke Agent, which is a comedic media brand focused on the entertainment of real estate professionals. And in the spring of 2019, he released the first ever real estate comic book called Commission Impossible, Rogue Agent. I didn't ask you, where did the inspiration of writing a book actually come from? I had to come up with a product that was perfect for my audience. That's how the inspiration came from. And also, I, uh, I, Eric Lee was drawing sarcastic real estate comics on Instagram. So he messaged me and I figured it'd be a good synergy. So taking it a, a step back, where did the concept of the broke agent come from then? The broke agent started about four years ago. Uh, my friend and former partner, Wes Pinkston, wanted to hire me for a marketing project for a agent website, basically. And I said, let's do a funny blog. He said, let's call it the broke agent. We went home, downloaded the Instagram handle, Facebook handle, Twitter handle, just started tweeting, got a lot of traction early, and that's pretty much where the concept came from. And then once we saw the feedback was really good, just kept running with it. And as far as growing the actual brand, obviously you didn't just come out in one day and say the broke agent, uh, you know, follow us, like our page. Like, how did you get that word out there? How did you start following or getting people to follow those accounts? Uh, we liked hundreds of thousands of photos. This is back when the Instagram algorithm <laughs> wasn't destroying everything or making it difficult to get a bunch of follows. So we were liking a ton of photos. We were following people. And because we had a catchy name, The Broke Agent, when we liked their photo, they would check out our profile, see that we were one of the first, if not the first, real estate kind of meme funny page. And because the name was catchy, they would follow us back. So you said that the, the algorithm is different than it was a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say as a piece of advice to somebody that's listening right now on, hey, you know, this guy has been able to grow his followers to X amount of numbers, but he's saying the algorithm is different. What would be a piece of advice or maybe something that you're currently doing to, to take advantage of that? I'm commenting on a ton of photos right now of and are you doing that or is a bot doing it? I'm doing it. Okay. I don't have a bot. I don't okay. know how to operate that. Uh, There's so a lot of people with these bots and you I know. Know, you'll see them do like a thumbs up on somebody that just died and you're like, <laughs> that was a bot. <laughs> yes. No, I, I, I don't do bots. Basically, I comment something funny or sarcastic on like Tom Ferry's post, a million dollar listing post, anything that's relevant to the real estate community. I try to comment on all the big accounts. So I do that at least five or six times a day. I do you know, 28, 30 hashtags per post, which gets the words out there. You have to keep switching those up. Uh, I'm sure you know you're the hashtag agent, right? So there you go. Um, I, I, don't, I don't really like photos as much, but yeah, I, I think commenting right now has been the most effective for me. But when I was first starting out, I would do the follow, I would do the unfollow, um, pretty much all the Instagram growth hacking that it does work to get your Instagram off the ground. But really, it's the, the content. And then also I do engagement groups. So I'm a part of um, a couple engagement groups with kind of like-minded uh, individuals in different industries. So there's an account called Attorney Problems. There's an account called Stupid Resumes. They're basically just disgruntled employees um, in their specific industry. And then we repost each other's stuff on stories or, you know, maybe once a week we'll repost each other's so stuff. So were you, were you a disgruntled employee and that's I, where, where I, this started? <laughs> I am a disgruntled employee. Okay. I'm a disgruntled agent. There's a lot of us. 90% <laughs> of us, I would say. Okay, and... Um, so for somebody listening to, to, to take what you just said, what you're recommending is go out and see who's an influencer in your space, who's doing something already and comment and engage with them, not just so that person can see you, but also people in the comments would also see you. Is that what, is that what you're getting at? Yeah. If, I mean, I've discovered a lot of accounts just because that account is commenting on accounts that I follow. So if they're commenting something funny or something witty and they have an account that's attractive, like something that says, you know, the broke agent or something that stands out within the comments, I will go follow that account. And for a real estate agent that's listening, is this the same piece of advice that you would give? Would you give them something else on how to grow their followers? Because tons of people come to me, Jonathan, how do we grow our followers? And it's like, well, first off, whatever you're paying for, stop because mm -hmm. you've got 5 billion likes, no comments <laughs> and 
something going crazy. Um, so stop doing that first off. But what would be the next step on, you know, how to go from a hundred to a thousand, a thousand to 5,000? Mm-hmm. What would you say that person should be doing? Uh, I think DMing uh, larger Instagram accounts is always helpful by saying, hey, what can I do for you? So, for example, this guy, Jason Cassidy, who works at Compass in San Diego, he DM me and said, hey, I see you have a big following. Um, I, you just came out with a book. I'll give away 10 of my books on my page if you shout me out. So it's kind of a reciprocal thing like that. So you could definitely do that, DM bigger accounts. Also, you could do mini engagement groups. So if you have a brokerage of 150 people, you could DM you know, 10 of those agents, and you could say, hey, repost my stuff, shout me out on your story, give you a reason to follow them, basically. And so what would, what would you say is the vision, if you have a vision of the broke agent and, uh, you know, what, 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 what does, <laughs> welcome to the being an entrepreneur. Right. <laughs> you just gave me a bunch of ideas right now, actually. So, uh, I mean, the, the long-term vision is to build this out into an entire media entertainment brand slash company uh, where we're posting daily scripted funny videos. Um, you know, like longer form, minute, minute and a half YouTube videos that are scripted, that are covering all the funny real estate scenarios. I mean, it's good to do memes, funny tweets, stuff like that, but it's really not capturing uh, what I think this could become. And do you plan on staying in the real estate space forever or breaking Hopefully out? this will take me out of the real estate space. Okay. Yeah. And, and into what space exactly? I mean, out of being a real estate agent. Got it, got it, got it, got um, it. I, real estate media, I think there's a great opportunity for this because I don't think there's too many people covering the lighter side of real estate, if you will, which is my main competitor, the, the Facebook uh, group. And yeah, I, I think that the inner monologue of a struggling realtor and an unfiltered approach to covering the ridiculous scenarios that happen on a daily basis in real estate. I think there's definitely an opportunity there. And I, I would like more people to be submitting videos. I want this to be like a collaborative effort of people sending me stuff and, and posting stuff that's kind of similar to my content as well. So it's not just one person creating. So what would, what would be that next step in order to make, make that happen? Whether it's a, a YouTube vlog or something like that, I really should be attacking video and I should be putting these ideas Um, to paper as opposed to just doing comic books or memes. I really think the longer form video uh, would be a good idea, but I need actors. I don't know if I should be in the videos. I don't know. Actors should be in the video. Well, you can be in the video like uh, what's the, unfortunately, I'm not saying you're going to die, but who's the guy that was in all the Marvel videos? Stan Lee. There you go. You can be the created Marvel. You can be the, you can be the, you can be like him where you're in the video, but you're not like the full on actor, but the broke agent is always in there. Right. I don't know if the feedback would be that great on that. You wouldn't be the next Stan Lee? No, I don't know about that. I mean, we did do a comic book, so maybe. There you go. Real estate comics. There you go. Look, you're staying in the same kind of uh, realm. So what other things do you have uh, as far as products? You have the book? We've got shirts. We've got merchandise. We have coffee cups. We Where do have, people find those? Uh, TheBrokeAgentStore.com. Pretty easy? Yeah, pretty easy. And, and they're, they're supposed to generate leads as well. So it's a, it's a way to promote yourself without you know, being an asshole about it by just saying you're in real estate. It's a way to say, hey, I'm wearing a funny real estate shirt. Maybe I'll get some leads out of this. And so do you think more people need to infuse some of that humor and some of that uh, different aspect into their real estate business? Because, you know, I tell people all the time, like, dude, you're not 24 seven, like buy or sell a house, like smile on your face. Like you have good times, you have bad times, you have hilarious times, you have terrible times. The reason that they call you at 9 PM at night and you don't answer the phone, they think you're a terrible agent is because two weeks ago, you just said, I work 24 seven, 365, you know, like I'm the best agent in the world, but that's not that feasible. What do you think about that? Yeah. I think there's more people that are doing funny videos. There's a guy named David Ferrugia that posts every single week. He does a funny open house video. There's a, you know, there's all these real estate rap videos. Did you hear about that controversy? Yes, I did. What'd you think about it? Um, I didn't really mind it. No, there was nothing wrong with it. Yeah. I can't believe they apologized. I can't believe the brokerage, the, the brokerage, got, rid brokerage got rid of them real fast. I'm like, huh? It, it, got, it got their brokerage a lot of publicity. Right. But I mean, <laughs> it, was, it was a bad rap video, I guess. Yeah. In the sense that it just wasn't fun to watch, but it, I don't see what it was making light of. I don't think they should have apologized. I think people were assuming other things because these agents were rapping. Right. I came out with two rap videos. The one I came out with in 2015 was 
heinous. <laughs> I like slap a girl's butt. I say horrible words. Yeah, you're now, now you're the broke agent. And now I'm the broke agent. Exactly. <laughs> well, I was the broke agent before that okay. as well. But have you seen the rap video? I have not. Failed that shit twice, but the third was the charm. I'm official now, bitch. Time to door knock and farm. Profile page up on my company site. Got my business cards and signs in a suit that fits right. Paragraph description and you know that shit's tight. About to pop all these commissions. Broke a high as a kite. I'll probably have to take it down if that gets resurfaced. I'll probably be canceled or something. <laughs> so what was, you said there was two. What was the second one about? Uh, the second one was about... Yeah. Yo, how'd it go with that girl last night? Yeah, man. We met out for like three hours. Kind of felt like I was back as a freshman in high school. Jesus. Anyway, I gotta go. I gotta sit that same open house. The same one? Yeah, the one where the seller's always there. All right. I'll talk to you later. Knock, knock, Mr. Stella, how do you do? What a beautiful day, man. The sky is so blue. It's basically just like an overbearing seller, and it's a conversational rap. I do Instagram stories. Okay. I just started the 4 a.m. club at 10 a.m. I saw that, which, that, which was feature. hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> where it makes fun of kind of the uh, Tom Ferry-esque 5 a.m. club, get up early. Uh, get on a conference call and get motivated. That's actually not even his concept. I know it? it's not. Yeah, and, and now, but and now it's kind of funny because now it's spread to multiple regions. So now you have every like entrepreneur is doing that. Now. Five a.m. West Coast, right. five a.m. East Coast, five a.m. Central, and five a.m. like international. I know it's infuriating. And people I'm just like, want to show how early they get up. There we go, the four a.m. club. Uh, what were we talking about? Instagram stories. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, anything um, that you like to use. Well, I've been posting my content to Instagram stories to get more engagement on mm. my content. You know how you can do a direct yeah. link up to your story? So that's really been Yeah, helpful. so explain to somebody that listening that d doesn't know what that means or how okay. that works. So on your Instagram feed, you could type in, or you, you click the little arrow on the far right, and then you could upload that to your story as if you were DMing it to someone, but you upload it to your story. And then you can do tap here. So what I'll do is I won't reveal the entire caption or the entire post, and then if they're just clicking through their stories, then they will check out my feed and it gets the, the post like, I don't know, probably 10% more engagement or something like and that. And are you so. putting any hashtags or tags within that and then the hiding stories, them? Yes. Okay. Um, I just started doing that. I'm trying to do like three hashtags per post Sweet. On, the, uh, on the stories, but it's pretty time consuming. Do you monitor your, your insights on Instagram? I check the follows and the demographics. But as far yeah, as... I don't monitor it, like, hourly. But not hourly, yeah. but, like, maybe once a week like to see, like, what the best piece of content was. Yes. Or, yes. and what do you do with, with those, those numbers? I just look at them and smile <laughs> at the engagement. No, I, I, I noticed that the videos do a lot better okay. than the regular posts. Um, I noticed the timing. Uh, weekdays, Saturday posts are always terrible. And which I'm, is kind of funny because most people would assume like Saturday, like weekends, more people, more free time. Right. I would think that as well. But maybe just because people are constantly on their phone during work or during the weekends. People are on it's phone. kind of funny, like this is on a like different tangent, but then people that are listening that are posting on LinkedIn right now that are posting during the day, they actually don't get that much engagement. But if you right. post between the hours of 12 and 2, like mm -hmm. 12 midnight and two in the morning, you get the most engagement. Why? That's when most people are looking for a job on LinkedIn. Makes sense. So that's actually when they get the most engagement. 60% of the LinkedIn community engages between 12 and two. Wow. Which is like drastic. And that's the highest engagement rates across any platform. Are you on LinkedIn? I am on LinkedIn. Do you post content on LinkedIn? We do post content on LinkedIn. Should I start doing that? You should yeah. definitely start doing that. Okay. Because not only can you do that, but if you have a company page what they call it we just use that as our public figure page which is what we just transitioned over into it's similar to facebook you have your your profile and then you have your page so your what you make on linkedin is your profile but you can create a company page and the reason that you want to do that is because you can run ads right and you can target brokerages you can target specific agents i can target like a specific building their employees mm -hmm. i can target like the fourth floor of this 34 building like it's like crazy how in depth you can get with the actual demographics right. that you're allowed to use i know with within real estate and fair housing there's things that you can or cannot do mm -hmm. i guess if you're marketing to agents it's kind of free game is yeah, that really how it, how it i don't works? know i do facebook ads daily yeah and i've never been hit with anything yeah i i, I think it's there's nothing actually with facebook just changed their uh uh, their platform and in two weeks they're getting rid of the ad sets but they just changed their platform where now if you're running an ad that is 
has to do with real estate at the very top. You have to click the housing button mm -hmm. and then you're allowed to run your ad. If you don't click the housing button, they can, you can get a fair housing violation. Okay. Got it. Good to know. So anybody Is listening, it, are there too many platforms to be on? I mean, if I, if I do LinkedIn too, I feel like that's just too much. I don't, I don't know. If no, because I mean, so that's a great question. We just finished up our beta for the hashtag agent Academy. And what we tracked is uh, how can we increase uh, organic engagement? Because a lot of people come to me, we want to run ads and do all these things. I said, well, what if we could do it for free? Well, that sounds great, but we don't know how to do that. What we found is if you can have five platforms with five pieces of information that are the exact same name, email, phone number, uh, website URL and address, you will get a four times organic engagement boost across all of your platforms just because you have that. Okay. And, and you'll know that your platform's optimized. I'll show you after, but you'll know your platform's optimized when you go onto Google and you look at your Google My Business profile, which you should have. You'll actually, Google will actually start recommending your YouTube, your LinkedIn, your Facebook directly on the My Google page and the only reason that they do that is because you have information that is the exact same so they know that's the exact same person so to answer your question yes you should do it however you should not focus on growing linkedin to a billion users you should just have it just for the pure aspect of google will pull that and it'll actually give me more val validity i almost said validity validity and credibility on instagram because they'll know that you're also on another platform so it actually builds the trust value which is the second component of the algorithm wow so i could get verified by this is what you're saying you can you can you know what that's in, the, that's increase the goal your chest you asked me earlier what the goal is i think it's get just verified get that, get that blue check mark so what what press articles are you on uh, any any real estate um media company i think has written something i think I, that I, i'm on and man i'm on I, I think i've been on the real deal like a couple of major ones so i've submitted those okay i've done everything i can i've gotten scammed like three times by instagram verification people you're like an idiot oh like, you to pay to <laughs> like, do you want to name it, any of them yeah uh, <laughs> what, the, the scammers yes yeah i could tell you a couple of stories about yes scams. we would love it, it, it we would love those. it exposes me for being an idiot but that's well okay. we've all done that we've all bought something thinking it's going to get get us there faster no, but have you oh, ever, is worse have you ever known you're being scammed but still just went through through with it just because you're like well maybe yeah this will actually work out no okay <laughs> so i got an i got an email from the oracle group seven at gmail.com which is already yeah. this is gonna be bad nice. um and this guy's like dude i get a bunch of rappers verified i got takashi 69 verified i got all these people and i was like dude you're full of shit like i know you didn't he calls me. Talked to him for 45 minutes. It sounds like he knows what he's talking about. He's like, yeah, just PayPal me, you know, $500. And we do PR for you. And we have this entire process with Facebook. And I was like, well, why is your email the Oracle Group at 7 or 7 at gmail.com? He's like, oh, we're in a transition period. Sends me his website. The website is also in a transition. So I, I, know, I know what's happening, right? And so he emails or I, I email him and say, hey, like, I, I need protection with this. Like, I need a guarantee that you're going to pay me back if it's like because I'll get you verified in two weeks. In two weeks. I feel weeks. like I shouldn't even tell the story. You should. It's, it's great. making me look like a complete moron. This happened twice to me, too. <laughs> like a, a couple of weeks afterwards. The same amount of money? No. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you the other one. It'll the, be the, the, more. The other one's even worse. <laughs> um, so uh, he, he calls me. He calls me like every other day to update me about these PR opportunities. Got a follow up? He's like, dude, I got you an email or I got you an interview with Entrepreneur Magazine. I was like, no, you didn't. I got you an email with founder.com. I got you an email with Vice. He said this new Vice TV channel wanted to have me on. And I knew this wasn't true, but he's like, here's the Instagram account. The Instagram account is some like marijuana account, basically, that was just created because I kept reaching out to him being like, where's the verification? It's been more than two weeks. <laughs> So eventually, he blocks my number, doesn't respond to any of my emails, and I realize that, obviously, I got scammed officially. So then I uh, request the money back on PayPal, and PayPal actually paid me back. So oh, nice. No harm done. Besides, so then you're good. Besides feeling like an idiot. And lost a lot of time. Two weeks later, I'm on Daquan's Instagram. Do you know who Daquan is? No. Okay, he's a funny just meme page. Do you okay. follow Daquan? Yeah. And then uh, there's a verified account, Kadeem Allen 5. I'm a huge college basketball fan. I know that Kadeem Allen played point guard for 
University of Arizona in 2012 to 2016. I'm like, why is Kadeem Allen 5 commenting on accounts saying, if you need a verification badge, DM me? And I, I knew this was a scam too, but I just wanted to, I wanted to hear it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I DM the guy and I'm like, hey, Kadeem, um, you're selling verification badges? He's like, yeah, it's just $75 and you'll get verified in two hours. I'm like, holy shit, two hours? That's incredible. And I'm like, no chance. Like, can you verify me first? He's like, no, you, you got to send the money first. And I sent the money. <laughs> And I didn't get verified, and then he blocked me. So that's <laughs> that's what that's what happened to me. And I I knew like the account was the account of this basketball player. I think he got drafted by the Celtics, actually. So I mean, the, these are two of the dumbest things I've ever done. This is not how I operate my business, by the way. I have, I have a question. Yeah, great. If you were the CEO, yeah. the founder of the Broke Agent, yeah, you had these followers and you had this platform, I'd be making a lot of money. You would. Yes, I would. Okay. So, so but what, what's the question? What would, yeah, what would you be doing? What would the first move be for you? So, you yeah, great question. The first move that I always ask in any business is I always ask our current members what they want. Because any business is built on you solving a problem for somebody else. So I would poll my current audience. I would poll if you have groups, um, if you just have polls on Instagram, whatever it may be. I would ask them, you know, we've came out with this book. We have some merchandise. Thank you so much for, you know, for those that have bought. Uh, we, you know, we're, we're appreciative of the engagement and whatnot, but we want to help you more. We want to do more. We think that we can take this, you know, brand to a bigger scale what is it that you know you would want or how do you envision us growing and you would see like what do they think they're like oh yeah it'd be great if you start a wine club okay well if you get like a thousand people then we would start a wine club but if they're like you know hey you know it'd be great if you come out with book two or do something and then whatever whatever it is that they say you would then tell them are you willing to put your credit card on file so then that way when we create it we can charge it well, the moment that they say no, they actually probably wouldn't have bought that. So what I would do to monetize what you currently have is take what you currently have and reshape and refocus exactly what we're selling. Because like I told you earlier, this this book has 47 chapters. That's 40 different guides, 47 different guides, 47 different posts, 47 different email newsletters, 47 different shirts that can, you know, this is the headshot shirt. This is, there's tons of different things that you can come from this one thing. But uh, like I said, I would really ask what people want because they'll tell you what they want. Whether it's good or bad, they'll tell you what they want. So when we built the hashtag agent, uh, we didn't have one piece of content already filmed. We didn't have one download, one resource, one anything. Uh, however, we were able to get 1,200 people into a group where they would then tell us this is what we want. And guess what? That's what we gave them. Right. And during that process, they'll say, we also want this, or we've gone through this, but we need more help, or could we have an event, or could we hire you to come speak to our team? Could we hire you to come speak at our event? And it just, we do what the people want. Because a lot of people start businesses assuming that if I start it, they'll buy. If I create this massive course, then all these people are going to buy it. Well, that's drastically opposite of what should happen. You should say, what would you want in a course? Mm-hmm. Then go and create that course uh, and then sell it. You were thinking there for a yeah, second. I was thinking. Maybe, Maybe I just talked. Talk, I just no, 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 talked that, that was long. all. That was all very good okay. advice. Like a, a big aspect of the Broke Agent brand is that I'm not like everybody else in the sense that I'm not constantly pushing courses. I'm not selling stuff to them. So my, my fear is that when I start that transition, if I start that transition, that I'll start alienate the audience. To be like, dude, I, I just want your funny content. I don't want to buy a course from you because I'm not going to do a real estate course. It would just be like an Instagram growth hacking course yeah. or something like that. Um, so that's yeah, well, kind of my fear. Whenever I push something, even if it's merchandise, even if it's on brand, is a real estate funny comic book. I would, that's why, you know, this is creative. I was like, what does the audience want? They want more content. They want more funny. They want to laugh. They want something they could hold in their hands, a the coffee table book, something to read at a dead open house, inspection, whatever the case may be created that product, did okay, you know, it, but the results weren't necessarily what I was looking for. I was looking for a little bit more validation. Yeah, so Ryan Dice of Digital Marketer went through a course with me that 
we're putting together, which is called Seven Conversion Hacks to Triple Your Business. Okay. And our goal is if we can't triple your business, the worst case scenario, which would be option B, is we double your business. You know, if we go, we're going to double your business, and then you don't double your business, it's like you didn't succeed. Right. If you go to triple and then you do only double, it's like, okay, I'll take that. Yeah. Um, but the, the, you know, to answer your question is, you know, if I start going into courses and modules and stuff and people don't want to buy it, then I'm kind of screwed. Well, we actually never promote, like, bigger products for sale, okay? We always do what I was telling you is we splinter. Micro content. Micro content. And we allow them to get as far as they want. Meaning if they only want to stay in that free bucket, they're actually never pitched a specific product. So if they only want to stay in the newsletter that's free, great. If you want to opt into the $7, um, you know, four chapters that we're going to give you, great. If you want to go from there to the book, great. If you want to go from the book to a bigger course on how we how, how you can write your own book. Mm -hmm. Great, we can do that. So, you know, one one good example of splintering is, um, I'll give you two good examples. One is a guitar. Let's say you have a, somebody that sells guitars, okay? It would be terrible for that person to actually go out somewhere and say, we have guitars for sale. They're not gonna sell that many guitars. However, if they went out and say, we're selling a hundred pack of guitar picks, for $9.99, you would get a lot of people buying that. Well, guess what? People who buy guitar picks also buy guitars. So you have now a customer that's sitting in your, it right there in front of you that you can easily upsell. It's like if a dentist offers teeth whitening at cost, like at cost, I don't make a penny, teeth whitening. Well, guess what? You now have a customer sitting in your chair, in your dentist office, you're doing the teeth whitening, that person is 10 times more likely to actually continue to work with your dental office and transfer their insurance program to your dentist. Why? Because you have them in your chair. It's an easier sell to get them as a customer. That is called splintering. This happened to me yesterday. You just got splintered. I got splintered hard. You literally have to splinter in your skin. I got stabbed by a huge piece of wood is what happened to me. Let's see. Let's see it. I was... In the dentist office, getting my teeth cleaned. Look at this example that I gave. This is Perfect. awesome. It's like you were watching me or something. Woo! Maybe I was. And they upselled me a $6,500 gum surgery, which I need because my gum line is receding because I've been brushing like a lunatic for 15 straight years. And I've noticed this. My gum's always sore. My teeth are exposed. And I took it. Bam! $6,500 right there. You know how many you know how many books that is? Yeah, it's sweet. That is called a product splinter. Wow. So they just splintered me. They literally upselled me while I was locked to a chair. What are you just gonna, having my teeth bleeding? And you're you're ten times more likely to go to the upsell. Oh, and then I bought Invisalign also. It's crazy. I didn't actually. I have Invisalign. And that's nice. that's exactly how they got me as well. Yeah. They uh, work. Or you yeah, yeah, I just took them off so that way I'm not like right. a little bit. Oh, that'd be disgusting. But no, it's great. Like this tooth. So my, my wisdom tooth started pushing and yeah. this and that and modern dentistry in Huntington Beach, shout out to them, phenomenal dentists. And they also do teeth whitening for free. Ooh, damn. Why, why are you winking at me? Why do you need teeth whitening? No, no, but I'm saying that's a splinter. That's how they got me into freaking Invisalign. Okay. Did you come up with the term splinter or is this something that No, that's like a marketing term. Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's also called like a tripwire. Okay. Have you heard of tripwire? I've heard of click funnels and upsells. Yeah, click well click funnels is an actual program. Oh, yes. Uh, I thought that was a term for no. click funnels. Like click funnels click is a software provider that does these different things. Okay. So let me give you the last example and this is a really cool one too. For somebody that wants to sell candles, okay? Oh, candles, open house candles. Genius. Okay. Right there, that's an idea. Bam. Every time you walk into an open house and it smells good because of a candle, everybody comments on it. We sell candle subscriptions to agents that have different smells. Even better, even better. We allow you to make your own candle. Let me, let me, let me show you how this works. So the number one candle manufacturer in the United States, they used to sell candles. They no longer sell candles. They sell pieces of a candle for you to make a candle. So the number one thing that you're going to need with a candle is what? A lighter. You're going to need a wick in order to make a candle. So what this person did is rather than selling the candles to people that want to make their own candles, we're going to sell them a wick. So you can buy a wick for a dollar. Okay. 
Well, well what, what, what what's, what's the, the next progression, progression that they're going to do? Well, I, I need the first one. Though, so. I, I need wax. to I need to get wax. Then, then I need to get dye. Then, then I need to get a case to wrap it in. So they splintered those things off. That's insane. But while they're going through it, there's another an, an, another um, marketing term which is called the accelerated offer. You just bought, bought the wick to make your own candle. Great. We have the wax where you can buy it or you could just buy the candle from us. Well, guess what? Most of those people will just buy the candle, plus they already bought the splinter, but they would have never have just bought the candle because they had this grand vision that they were going to build it themselves. Well, once they get into it and they're like, man, this is going to take a long time. I don't know. And we're literally talking about candles. This is a broke age and we're talking about candles, but that's how a splinter works. Okay. And that's how any great marketer will sell something. They will never sell their what we would call their core product you would never sell that you would sell a splintered of the core product because the core product is actually your mid-tier product most people like to say their core product is like this high tiered price or this high ticket item that's actually not your that's not that's not your core product your core product should be between 50 to 200 dollars, and it should have uh, a lower end, seven dollars to twenty dollars, and then it can have a higher end, five thousand to twenty thousand dollars. That's the actual. What could I sell for twenty five thousand uh, dollars? It's houses, not houses. You could do a lot of things for twenty five thousand dollars. You can buy a five thousand dollar cruise with me and go to the Bahamas. We're doing a Bahamas trip in February. Me to a cruise already? Yeah, it's five thousand dollars. Bam. I mean, you got sixty five hundred to drop on the gums. You got five thousand dollars to show them off. Hey, payment plan. <laughs> I, uh, I splintered my own payment plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's, let's wrap up here. One person, dead or alive, if they were to walk into the office and sit with you for an hour, you could talk about anything, you could do anything, who would the person be and why? Probably Derek Jeter because he was my hero growing up. He's the ultimate clutch gene. Man. Just, just not for the, just not for Miami, but he's trying to turn it around there. Right? Are you a sports fan? I am a diehard sports fan. What, what are your teams? My teams are the Cowboys, the Angels, and the Lakers. Okay, got it. Yeah. What do you think about Zeke? Do you think he's gonna sign? Uh, yeah. I mean, he's he's in Cabo right now, just living it up. But Jerry Jones came out and said, you know. You're, you're not going to push him over. I mean, he's got the highest valuation. Jerry, Jerry, yeah, what, what did he say? that? He you said, know, you, don't need a, you don't need a whatever to win a championship. Yes, rusher? you do. Yeah, you do. Emmett Smith? You totally... Well, wasn't that well like, every like single the, Super Bowl has come fr from a, a leading rusher with the Cowboys, at least. So they're going to have to figure it out because uh, uh, Mikael Thompson just signed his $100 million deal, and he is a wide receiver with the New Orleans Saints, but... He's in the same class Michael as, yeah, well, I like to say, like, oh, I was wondering yeah. anything yeah. you were talking about. That. No, no. Okay. No. Uh, this is some obscure cowboy that I haven't heard of. No, no, this is the saint. So, yeah, he's going to, he'll, he'll get paid. I think he'll get paid. He, we don't want to have the Le'Veon Bell scenario happen to us. Right. He's going to get paid somewhere, so we might as well pay him. Yeah. We need him. Where can people find you? Where can people connect with you? Where can people buy your stuff? I was looking forward to talking a little bit more sports, but you can jump right into my... That doesn't mean that we have to end it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you could find me at The Broke Agent on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, formerly Snapchat. I never use that anymore. Instagram story destroyed it. Do you use Snapchat? I do not. I use Instagram stories. Uh, TheBrokeAgentStore.com if you want to buy some of these shitty shirts. Uh, TheBrokeAgentBook.com if you want to buy a great book. Do you have TheBrokeAgent.com? I do. But you don't use that? Uh, no, I do. It was a blog that I was using, and now I'm trying to switch that into, like, the home hub for everything. So we can help you with that, too. You can help me with that. <laughs> How much am I going to have to pay for this coaching problem? I mean, it's going to cost you probably 20% 20, 20 equity in the broke agent. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Take it. <laughs> hey, everybody. This is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins official. Send me a comment. Shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.